In this video, I want to look at finite integral domains. Before I start, a few reminders. First, every field is an integral domain. So a field just meant we had inverses. So if a is not equal to zero, and ab is equal to ac, then I can multiply both sides by the inverse of a, and get that b is equal to c, which tells me my, con my cancellation property holds. So we have that the field does imply integral domain. However, this didn't go the other way around. Not all integral domains are fields. The easiest example is the integers. The integers absolutely have the cancellation property. However, they do not contain inverses. The inverse of two would not be an integer, so it would not be in that ring. However, every finite integral domain is a field. And so not every integral domain is a field, but if it is a finite integral domain, it is guaranteed to be a field. So let's suppose we have a finite integral domain then it's gonna consist of the elements zero and one, as well as a1, a2, et cetera, up through a n. So we'll let the a1 through a n be all of the elements that's not the additive or multiplicative identity. So in this case, there are a total of n plus two elements. Let's consider one of the ai's. And let's consider all of its products. So we'll multiply ai by each element in my finite integral domain. Since this is an integral domain, I know that if ai x is equal to ai y, then x is equal to y. So there are n plus two distinct products here. So we have exactly n plus two elements and exactly n plus two products. So for one of them, we must have that it's equal to one to get this one-to-one -one correspondence. So therefore, every element that's not zero would be invertible. So a finite integral domain is a field.